When True Green 7 first told me about his series, four artists design Pokemon from the same description, before I'd even watched the first episode, just from reading the series title, I thought that the description would be something fairly concrete. My mind immediately went to my old mystery Pokemon series, where I designed new Pokemon from existing Pokedex entries that I was not familiar with. So when Happy Gamer Nick got in touch with me a few months back to organize a similar gathering, where not only every artist is making Pokemon from the same prompt, but also every participant gets to pick a prompt for everyone to do, I knew exactly what my prompt was going to be. I randomized six Pokemon, and then I picked three pieces of Pokedex entries total. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I looked at all of their Pokedex entries and picked three pieces of interesting information. And so I want you to put them together somehow. So I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll read them out to you. There are some areas where people use the string it spins for their own weaving. It causes explosions, then takes advantage of opponents' surprise to rob them of their vitality. This gluttonous Pokemon only assists people with their work because it wants treats. Wow. That's my guy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so feel free to uh, mix and match. You know, you could use all three for the final stage. You could use one for the first stage, two for the final stage. If you want to make two completely separate Pokemon that just, you know, one uses one of the pieces and one, the other one uses two, or you somehow share them, you know, whatever. But those are the three pieces of Pokedex entry that I want you to incorporate. Ooh. Nice. Okay, cool. That's exciting. I was not expecting one like that. That's, that's very yeah, interesting. To get us started, here is Gabe from the channel Fruity Art. All right, so I super focused on them using the thread or the fiber. So I'm I'm looking at textiles and animals that we get textiles from. I used to have a, a rabbit for a really long time. It was very fluffy. It was basically like an angora rabbit. I didn't do a bunny, even though I love bunnies. But I picked a similar animal um, that also can have pretty wild hair that we don't have a Pokemon for, and that is a guinea pig. Wow, wait, we don't have a guinea pig yet? No, we don't have a guinea pig. It's so cute. So this is, this is a, our cute little <laughs> teeny tiny little guinea pig boy. His name is Ampiggle, the static Pokemon. This tiny little hairball generates excessive amounts of static electricity, which causes its hair to stand on end. And Piggle are always hungry and will release a bright static explosion to temporarily blind others and steal their food. While it may be tempting to pet its soft fur, if the Ampiggle doesn't trust you, you will get a nasty shock. <laughs> uh, and he is actually an electric type, a uh, secondary electric type, and that comes from the static electricity. He's just so fuzzy. That's so smart. Uh, Silhouette already reads so electric, like right off the bat. Mm -hmm. It's so good. The color, mm, it's perfect. I'm really happy with how he turned out. Now, staying in that same like region of the world where guinea pigs come from, uh, we're going to jump up quite a bit to a much larger animal that, again, is still used for textiles. Um, we're going to maintain the typing, and we are going to get Glampaca. What? Wow. <laughs> the Woven Pokemon. By expertly controlling its static electricity, Glampaka is able to braid its own long fur into thick thread. It whips its fur around and can deliver strong shocks as if they were electric cables. Easily attracted by food and domesticated, people use this Pokemon's threads in both textiles and electronics. So again, normal electric, less staticky now, but we're saying that kind of these woven cords, braids are kind of like power cables a little bit. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, he's just uh, he's a goofy goober who looks fabulous and is living his best life. I could definitely see Furfru being his best friend. <laughs> like a Pokemon episode where you have like Furfru and this Pokemon come in and they clash because I am the most pretty Pokemon with the most unique hairstyle. And like your Pokemon said, no, I'm better. <laughs> it, it, it's really interesting because like these are two such different creatures, but you still like they still feel related. Uh, they're like there's the colors and obviously like the hair theme. But then you, like 
there's the tooth that is obviously very prominent on on the guinea pig and kind of emphasized in a sort of a silly way, but it, but it's very clearly right there for the alpaca. So it's almost like a Magikarp and Gyarados kind of situation where mm-hmm. the at, on first look they are very different, but if you really look at their designs, you can see that there's a lot of shared elements between the two. Uh, really like that. We need more Pokemon like this. Like, honestly, I don't need a middle stage. You know, I the concept has evolved. That's what's important here. Yeah, that's so cool. Also, you killed it with all the renderings today and like the posing, like the movement, the locks kind of moving like that is so nice for like what would normally be a Pokemon with who's just so stacked with fur and probably couldn't emote a lot. Like you got good motion to fill out that negative space. Like I would evolve it, but I would definitely want the little cute (laughs) guinea pig Pokemon as well. I would drop that Everstone, not drop it on him because he'd probably die. I would gently, (laughs) gently lay it on him. (laughs) Because that thing is too cute to evolve. The shiny colors for Glampack are fantastic. I'm not going to lie, there's no inspiration there. That was just fun. No, it works with the copper and stuff, like uh, an oxidization. You see in like copper mm-hmm. Raja and stuff, like electric wool, you know, woven. Like Yeah, it, you're right. This was totally of, intentional. Yeah, yeah no, no, exactly 100%. What you said. I, had yeah. to, uh-huh. I had to remind you. That's right. That's right. Next up is Happy Gamer Nick. And by the way, thanks for organizing this, Nick. For the first one, I've taken, it's one prompt. But I, I, I played around with it a little bit. It isn't like what you would expect from it. This prompt was very interesting to work with. I wanted to make sure I used all the three prompts in the end. But the first one was targeted on the glutinous Pokemon. I didn't want to make a basic one who just eats regular food. But I decided to make one based on those mall rides where you throw in a coin to make it work. This would fit the prompt quite nicely, because it only does its job after inserting those coins into it, which can be seen as food. Seesaw, the coin eater Pokemon. This is an energetic Pokemon, capable of moving at 50 kilometers an hour, but it doesn't move an inch in front of any humans until it's been fed with some coins. They don't tend to form a strong bond with their trainers due to them caring so much about coins. But in rare cases, it might let their trainer get a ride without giving it coins. They have been seen chasing Gimigoos for their coins as well. (laughs) Very, very, very cute. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. it's really adorable. Yeah, you really captured the look of those like mall rides, right? The waste of money. (laughs) Yeah. I can just picture like... A bunch of these just kind of run in a circle, like a carousel. <laughs> like it's just, it's nice. <laughs> I thought, I thought it would be more unique than really making like a a, a grumptious little fellow that eats a lot. Like I thought, like coins would, it would still fit the the, the prompt. I'd say because it does require food or treats in order to function. Yeah. I I am actually quite in love with the design I made. <laughs> Does it stay in that pose when it doesn't move? Or does it stay in, in, in whatever yeah. pose it's in when it doesn't move? I would say it goes back to this pose. Like they are <laughs> stuck in that car- carousel as well. I did play around with like putting literal a stick through the middle of his body. But I had seen that before in Instagram. Someone made like a ghostly where the stick oh, would yeah. be like a ghostly thing mm. that goes through it. That design was awesome. So I thought like, mm, I can't do that because that would be like steal it lot not necessarily stealing but it's already yeah. done so i just thought like just make it unique in their, own, in their own way for our second piece i wanted to combine the other two prompts my idea for this pokemon was to make a bug like creature who's able to weave explosive bombs i thought a bomb shape as body would also help a lot in that department the base of this pokemon is very simple but since i wanted to make sure you saw the deadliness as well i added a skull like face pattern onto the design expleave the weaving bomb Pokemon. This Pokemon is known to be very aggressive to others. It flies in swarms above their targets and bullies them with their explosives. The string this Pokemon makes can be used for weaving, but be warned, it never loses its explosive powers. I love this. The the design of the body is so simple, but so effective. And then it has like those huge eyes that just, I I, I don't know, they they, they draw me in. Do you see this as like, a bug like or is it more of like a little pig 
yeah it, it was originally i um it was supposed to be a bug like a flying more i i took inspiration of a black widow with the color palette as well yeah, so okay. yes it is sort of a spider-like creature mm. but i didn't want to give it the bug type because i see it as a dark type because it looks so mean and fire because of the fire bombs that he makes so i've Felt like those typings fit him more, but yes, it is a bug creature. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I think people also forget when they create fake mon and whatnot, like, it doesn't have to be explicitly the thing. Like, this is certainly a bug um, at its base or core, but the dark and fire are more important for its story. So the, the other thing with this, and I don't know if it's an intentional, but it works for me really well, is looking at it, the wings, the little things on the on the butt back and the eyes and those, it reads a little bit like a monkey head. Which, I was going to say that too. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. There is a knot called a monkey's fist that is a, a round, heavy knot. It, look, it basically looks like a bunch of hands kind of going like this. It's called a mm -hmm. monkey's fist. But I think it maybe unintentionally works really well because if this thing is like whipping around this big, heavy bomb thing, like it just works as a monkey's fist mm -hmm. knot. Um, which like chef's kiss. That's great. Yeah, I, I would like to claim that, uh, but I can't. <laughs> I did actually make their wings red in order to, uh, at first I made them bigger as well to like sell them as like in the dark, you would see his wings mm -hmm. as if big eyes coming towards you. So that was the thought behind those red uh, wings. Uh, but I made them a little bit bigger because otherwise the, the drawing would have been too horizontally presented, which is, right. I don't think that small thing should be in that way. Uh, but yeah, there was supposed to be like a little short face um, that you see when you see this Pokemon. But no, I wasn't thinking about the monkey, uh, <laughs> the monkey nut. <laughs> well, it, it works for me. It works. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go. Up next, Mr. Bonnie John. Of all the collabs and make sure you watch those collabs as well and leave a like on this video too this was the one Thanks, buddy. <laughs> that of course <laughs> this is the one that kicked my ass for this prompt i honed in on the parts of pokedex data that i felt could truly flow into one another to tell some semblance of a story from there i could begin whittling down the direction i could take for an animal base that could fit my prompt as hyenas are seen as snippy and ever hungry creatures i wanted to go in that direction since i wasn't entirely pleased with the puchiana line by the way, he's still a good boy. Since I wanted to lean more canine, the puppy dog eyes could work very, very well with assisting people to gain favor and treats. The body language really does the heavy lifting here. A scoundrel hiding behind all smiles really sets up the stage. Cryena. Oh, the scoundrel adorable. Pokemon. <laughs> Cryena uses a series of whines and whimpers to exploit unsuspecting passerbys into feeding the usually starving Pokemon. As they struggle to capture prey in the wild, these gluttonous rascals only assist people because they want treats. The sad laughter of Cryena hoping to earn a treat or two is a classic move that break down the guard of even hardened trainers, who soon find themselves surrounded by snarling and cackling packs of the scoundrel Pokemon. We can peep the typing and see a normal fairy typing. Hyena kind of get a bad rap, and, and largely you'll see fake mon that are typed dark, but I wanted to really lean into making... Kind of like that Gen 1, Gen 2, like, it's a hyena, and that's what you're getting. But we need a, a default base to maybe make this a little more interesting. So, I want you guys to peep that ability, Scrappy. This Pokemon can hit Ghost-type Pokemon with normal and Fighting-type moves. It's also unaffected by Intimidate. This Pokemon evolves at level... 24? Huh, okay. Hyenas are, of course seen as mischievous tricksters and in, in many African cultures. Specifically, I ended up drawing from the Sudanese culture, and I'll, I'll quickly tell this story. This deity named Quoth had a rope that connected to the heavens, and every day humankind would take this rope to be rejuvenated and come back. However, one day a hyena went, maybe did their, their thing out there, and the, this goddess did not like it. And a hyena on its way out after being kicked out severed that rope. What happens when you can no longer reach heaven and that rejuvenating juice? It takes advantage of opponent's surprise to rob them of their vitality. It was this part of Libra's potential prompt entries that excited me the most. In fact, 
It tied perfectly to the first half, and I decided to lean heavily towards the hyena trickster's vibe across Sudanese folklore. Ghost, fairy, dark, and poison. Several types would fit, and I decided to push in a direction both with silhouette, expression, and soon color to create an amalgamation of a Pokemon that represented a true hyena. Cryena would fall their whimpers into hysteria that echoed like a cacophony into the night. Festerical, the decaying Pokemon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. A Pokemon that lives on the edge between life and death. Festerical, while appearing frail and brittle, harbor dangerous anxiety turned adrenaline that make them incredibly difficult to read. These Pokemon reserve their energy carefully, stalking their prey slowly while cackling from the effects of their delusional state born from their typing, exhaustion, and hysteria. Those that hear the jeers and laughter of a Festerical are paralyzed in fear, only able to watch the decaying Pokemon open their maws to reveal rows of rotting teeth before they are turned into a rare, fresh meal. This Pokemon robs people of their vitality, in this case using their babies to surprise trainers that don't know better and see a cute little puppy it's got to stop uh, the road to take care of before they get finished. We got a fun poison heal ability here. They actually evolve at level 24 when holding leftovers as a nod to that these pack Pokemon are constantly scrapping for food even amongst each other and that the young Kraina can barely get a meal in even though they do the heavy lifting with their puppy dog eyes. Damn. <laughs> the end. <laughs> I'll say one thing about the design. I could have gone for like a crazy like red or purple, but that blue introduced like a very nice pop. And there are some dogs out there with such a color, but I, I wanted to like almost even make the feel of a dark and a ghost creep throughout the line. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I still feel like I got like a fun fairy poison color to tie in the, the quoth connection specifically with the Sudanese culture. I was like, I don't want to make a super mythical kind of Pokemon. I would picture this line and kind of base the stats like in, in a way like Zoroark type of thing, like, you know. Uh, somewhat sort of. adjacent to that. Yeah. Um, I definitely see Zoroark in there and uh, Hisui and Zoroark in the shiny. Uh, but the yes, but yeah. the head is very unique. It stands out from Zoroark because of the head, the design of the head. Poison type in that um, not only in its nature is very poisonous, but I just kind of wanted it to be this festering, like slowly dying, withering kind of entity. Maybe it's feral breath. You know, I wanted to connect something to the Joker and laughing gas and, and things of that nature, you know. I think it I think it worked. I also think the poison I wasn't expecting poison, but I mean the other thing about hyenas is they hunt. They certainly hunt, but they eat a lot of carrion and That's like true. rotten yeah. food. So poison I think it it's justified that way as well. That is a great point where yeah, it could have developed either an immunity to that kind of stuff or that it's carrying so much bacteria and whatnot that transfers poison to their next bite. I love that. And finally, the moment you've been waiting for, at least I hope you've been waiting for it, me. Yeah, so because of the part about people using the strings it produces for their own weaving, my mind went to animals that produce thread. First I thought of like spiders, and then I thought of silkworms. A, a silkworm and a, and a cocoon. I told you, nature's uh, real-life Pokemon. The concept will really come together when I show you the, the second one. But yeah, so I made a, a silkworm Pokemon. Oh, <laughs> How that, that, that helps so people. Cute. It looks so old. This is Spinarva, yeah, he does look old. the silk spinner Pokemon. There are some areas where people use the string it spins for their own weaving. The color and quality of its thread depend on its diet. This gluttonous Pokemon only assists people with their work because it wants treats. It produces fibers from its face, basically, but then it can spin that into thread. And so it uses it to to create this hood or shawl that it wraps around itself. You gotta love the shawl. It, it creates this this big ball that it stands on. It is massive, I just realized. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Holy. same, it's big. I expected it to be a tiny little critter. Oh, and I love the detail of it, like, pinning its feet down in the yarn too, which is very cute. But yeah, it's got the, the bushy eyebrows, the kind of beard. It just feels like, yeah, an older gentleman who likes to, to he has knit. the knowledge. Um, yeah. yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, so this is, a, very, this is cool. a very defensive Pokemon. 
uh, very slow as you might expect, but you can see that its stats are very high. Oh damn, yeah. Holy! That is a tanky little critter. And depending on what you feed it, it, it can produce uh, different outputs. I could even imagine an in-game mechanic where it could maybe alter its color if you gave it a, a what is it, a pecha berry or, or a lecha berry or pineapple berry, like... Yeah, yeah. This would be a perfect Pokemon for that uh, Pokemon Stadium mechanic where there's just some random variation in the color of the Pokemon. Where the concept went from there is that you, if you see that silkworm cocoon, it looks like a ball of thread. There is there's something else that looks like a ball of thread. That's called dragon's beard candy. It's a Chinese Whoa. candy that is basically you make it by like turning your, your, your sugary dough into strings and then wrapping it into a ball. And then there's usually some kind of filling like peanuts or something like that. And so because it's a dragon's beard, and just for your reference, this is what a fully grown uh, silk moth looks like. Oh, so cute. They are, they are fairly plain looking, uh, but they do look this, like they look very bushy and they have these antenna that, well, they, they look like bushy eyebrows. So yeah, so the, the dragon's beard made me go for a dragon and bug evolution. Wow. wow. Let's go. Wow, wow, wow. This is Weavern. Uh, oh, that's, that's, a, that's a perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it really is perfect. <laughs> uh, the stat total is the same. So this is a kind of a Scyther and Scizor situation where they have the exact same base stat total, but the evolution changes the distribution. So it changes how it behaves, uh, but it doesn't make it any more or less powerful. It creates bombs out of its sweet thread. Bombs that don't explode are considered a rare delicacy. It causes explosions, then takes advantage of opponent surprise to rob them of their vitality. Man, it is so smart to make like, sort of like forms. It's, and it isn't a real evolution. Would this evolve through leveling or through like a special trade-off or like an item? Remember that Spinarva changes what it makes based on what it eats. And so in order to evolve it, you do have to feed it something special. You have to feed it a rare candy. Ah, uh, I ah, see. Clever so and it's, cute. So its thread becomes sweet. They can make this uh, this dragon's beard explosive balls. So smart, man. <laughs> it's so smart. It's satisfying switching from fairy to dragon in a, in a nice way. I love how flowy his little mustache is when he's a dragon. The, the antennae flow well, the... the mustache and beard flows well the tail is flows well it's all really nice no like your style this this style would be perfect for like games like my this this tickles my brain in such good such good spots like i love it thank you it's perfect it's a basketball game this guy's gonna dunk on you that is part of the reason we made the shiny orange so that the ball is orange. <laughs> Basketball? Oh, no, no way! So <laughs> There's no way! <laughs> but there are also some related moths, like uh, like Atlas Moth is is somewhat related as well, and so they, they have more interesting colors. We can end this video by doing one thing and one thing only, and that's singing the Space Jam song. <laughs> Come on, Islam, and welcome to your <laughs> uh, So speaking of Space Jam, it does use the, the, the ball to steal people's vitality, so uh it's got a monsters thing going. <laughs> Ooh. No, he's Michael Jordan. He's the hero. <laughs> That's it for my prompt, but we had three other prompts to draw as well. So after you leave a comment telling me what you thought of these designs, check out the playlist in the end card or the link in the description for the three other videos we made together, one on each of our channels. There are some fantastic designs on the other videos. You won't want to miss them. Thank you for watching, and thank you to all of the Libros who support my work. I especially want to thank Trist, who just joined last month, and Gano, who helped me a ton with all of these designs with ideas, feedback on my drawings, and top-tier name suggestions. If you want to become part of the Umbreon Libros community, click the join button below or leave me a tip on Kofi. I'll see you in the next chapter.